Hello and welcome, everybody, to another episode of Last Week in Quantum. I'm your host, Bill Roth. This is the show where we review the news in the world of quantum computing and its impacts on the world of cybersecurity and more. And with us this week, as always, Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations at QSecure. Welcome, Brandon. Thank you, Bill. And new to the show, but not new to the QSecure family, Meg Gleason, head of UX and product adoption at QSecure. Welcome, Meg. Thanks, Bill. I am psyched to be here on the legendary podcast. Great to have you. So, bunch of things going on in the world of quantum. Uh, QSecure had an announcement. Crypto Agile post-quantum cryptography protection for Cisco router network encryption. Can't wait to hear more about that. The router to router uh, work is super exciting. And then uh, have a brief discussion on is OpenAI open to quantum? Can't wait to hear that discussion. And finally, uh, inside the next generation of computing and the role that quantum plays. Let's get started by talking to our experts. So an interesting story in the Quantum Insider, uh, uh, but also a reference to Cure Secure's own launch uh, last week of the post agile, the crypto agile post quantum cryptography protection for Cisco router network encryption. Brandon, give us the headlines. What's this all about? Well, we have the Quantum Insider, several other sources pick up the story. So QSecure has launched QProtect Core Security. This is revolutionizing Cisco router communication with advanced post-quantum cryptography to defend critical networks from quantum decryption threats. This is aligned with NIST standards, and it marks a significant step forward in safeguarding digital communications. Meg, you were at the forefront of, uh, of this new innovation. So I wanted to jump into the rip and replace approach of QProtect. Uh, can you describe the process and technology behind the seamless integration with existing Cisco routers? Yeah, absolutely, Brandon. And and shout out to the entire team. It really was a, an incredible effort to bring this one to, to market. Um, it is uh, just to kind of take a step back. Um, you know, I think we all hear router, router comms, and it sounds maybe a little bit complex, or we think about that weird box in our closets at home that is sometimes super frustrating when it doesn't work quite right, but we don't really know how it works. And that's totally normal. Um, and for what, what we're doing with Core is basically taking those, those same boxes that exist in a little bit of a different way for enterprise and government um, and trying to bring those connections between the routers up to post-quantum secure. So what do these routers really do? Uh, they basically are the gatekeepers for transmitting an incredible amount of data and critical data. And it's just getting shot over the open internet rough and rowdy. And uh, the promise of quantum computing uh, really poses a big threat to those, those sessions and those tunnels that that data goes between for these massive enterprise routers. Um, and we can kind of think just to ground it a little bit more in reality of, you know, I'm here in an office in Tucson and we've got the rest of our team, you know, scattered throughout the country in a big office in San Mateo. Um, and I'm working on a network here those coworkers are working on a network there. And when I'm sending data to, to that team, it's going over uh, that router tunnel. There's a router here, sending it to a router there. Maybe it's in the cloud, um, but it is it is extraordinarily vulnerable. And this is happening all over the world. You know, think of, of banks, think of telecoms, really when you've got teams that are disparate sending information, uh, it is vulnerable. And so how do we consider protecting these things? Um, it, it really has to be simple. You know, Brandon, you said we have a, a no rip and replace approach. And that's pretty critical for, for these routers. These are, are significant investments for enterprises. These things are not cheap um, and, and neither is the data. It is highly valuable. So pretty much makes it the ideal candidate of, of where to start when you're considering testing out quantum encryption. Uh, we, we pretty simply to, to really tell the, the shortest story possible. Um, these routers get keys from our awesome orchestrator that are post-quantum secure. They do a handshake. 
thanks to the incredible innovation of, of Skip protocol with our friends at Cisco. Uh, and then that handshake occurs and boom, you're off to the races with post-quantum encryption. So it's really designed to be quite simple, no rip and replace, it's all software, so it makes it very cost effective. Plus we give you visibility uh, into how that configuration occurs through our cool control plane and administrative dashboard so that the management is easy going forward. Uh, this is a, a one time upgrade that uh, really will help change the future of how uh, router comms are, are managed for their crypto. Well, you heard it here first, folks. QProtect Core Security, how to keep your routers secure. It's not rip and replace, it's wrap and embrace. So I thought I'd just <laughs> throw that one in. You guys can use that one for free if you want. Quick reminder, folks, all the links mentioned in uh, today's show will be in the show notes. And don't forget, it really helps us out. If you like this, subscribe to us on our YouTube channel or podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and a veritable field of other options where you, where you pick up your podcast. Uh, stay up to date with all the top news on last week in quantum. So next article, you know, OpenAI, but there we kind of ran into them. And apparently the question is, is OpenAI open? Uh, is, are they opening up to quantum? Brandon, What? Uh, give us more context on this. Well, first off, shout out to the Quantum Insider. This is a uh, back-to-back -back articles from them we're covering this week, but big news. Uh, in light of OpenAI's intriguing move toward quantum, it signals a strategic pivot to harness quantum computing's robust potential for groundbreaking AI advancements. Meg, uh, how do you envision integrating quantum computing to enhance the capabilities and efficiency of AI systems, particularly in high demand applications like ChatGPT? There are a couple of, couple of scary words in there, Brandon, uh, especially for most folks when we consider, I think, uh, quantum, AI, and then I'm going to throw another one in there. ML is sort of the triple cheeseburger of tech terror nowadays. Um, Machine but... learning for those folks at home, ML. Go ahead, Meg. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, so I think these things can sound pretty complex and scary, but uh, simply put, if we think about quantum computers as being just really awesome, powerful computers, um, there, you can kind of consider the integration and, and relationship of these three things for, for harnessing that computing power uh, to train more effective models for both artificial intelligence and machine learning. So I really think that the intersection can play in a couple of different ways, but I'm no expert, so I will fully disclose that I have actually asked ChatGPT this exact question, what are you gonna do when quantum computing comes around? And I think that there are, are two answers uh, that it gave that apply to a couple of other AI applications. Uh, and that is speed and complexity. So quantum computing gets through really complex problems really quickly. And so when we input our prompts and say, hey, help me out with this super secret thing that I don't want anyone to know I used you for, it will generate responses at a much faster rate than what we've seen today if you put those two technologies together. And then the complexity side, you know, I'm sure we've all kind of tested it out. You ask a, a compound sentence question and uh, only half the question maybe gets answered or the nuance is a little bit missed. Uh, with these more advanced uh, models being powered by quantum computing, I think we'll start to see a little bit more what feels like maturity uh, in the ability for these applications to handle complexity. So it'll be pretty exciting. Indeed, it will. Lots of exciting thing. Uh, lots of exciting things are going on. In fact, I think you can tell when something's getting big. When I think there's when a topic like quantum is big, you can tell by who's covering it just how big it is. You know, it's you know, if you get it, there's going to be industry pubs first. Then maybe the economists will do something about it. But you know what? I think. Speaking of quantum leaps, there was a story on CNN of all places, talk about mainstream media, about uh, the next generation of computing. Brandon, tell us about the story on CNN. Yeah, uh, definitely go check out the link in the show notes. Uh, great video out of CNN. It was uh, Anna Stewart, I believe her name was. She met with the CEO of Oxford Quantum Circuits. And uh, they're hoping to unlock the potential of the world's most powerful processors among 
all the other applications for quantum. So, uh, Meg, I was excited to have you on the show today and kind of tailored this message. I want to hear your thoughts. What societal advances are you most excited about from the emergence of quantum computers? Yeah, thanks, Brandon. It's a uh, it's pretty exciting because you know we work in the cybersecurity space, so often our gaze is set towards you know what are what are the potential harms that can be brought about by quantum. You know what's our critical data that needs to be protected. But taking the the more positive sort of innovation lens, um, I think is is always a good refreshing grounding take. And uh, in the video, I, I would second anybody uh, who's watching this highly recommend to go watch it. Um, Dr. Wisby. Uh, presents a couple of different, uh, you know, cases for quantum in our everyday life. You know, things like defense uh, come immediately to mind, sort of the flip side of, of the protection as well. Um, you know, a lot of folks will also point to, to finance running, you know, more sophisticated and fast data analytics um, for risk management and such, as well as energy is noted. But I personally really aligned with her, her last a uh, call out uh, around healthcare. Uh, she she spoke to al Alzheimer's care in particular. You know the brain is incredibly complex, and and being able to have that compute power to to better understand diagnosing and, and treatment courses, I think, is going to be pretty incredible um, as it develops over the next couple of years. I, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for tailoring the way that treatments are developed for individuals because. You know, you can take into account a lot more data, be it a more comprehensive medical history um, or, you know, other data sets of other patients. So I think there's some really good, uh, really good advancements in healthcare that can come from this and, and eager to see it develop. It'll take some time, uh, but I think that'll be very positive change thanks to quantum computing. Indeed. Well, folks, that's all for today's show. Uh, I'm your host, Bill Roth, and with us this week has been, as always, the convivial and avuncular Brandon Dennis, Director of Operations, and for the first time, and we hope not the last, Meg Gleason, Head of UX Product Adoption at Secure. Thank you to you both. Always a hoot. Thank you. Thanks, folks, and uh, we will see you next week on Last Week in Quantum. <laughs>